Wow, so <laughs> this may be the Ravens' final pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. Before we get into this, I got to say thank you all uh, for being a part of this. Thank you to everybody that joined the live stream of the draft that we did for the first round. And thank you to everybody that's watched all the videos for every single pick that the Ravens have made. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for doing that because this is not anything that you have to do. But the fact that y'all willing to support, I appreciate it. So thank you for that. Seriously. Now, um, with the Ravens 11th pick of the draft, 11 rookies. It's a lot of rookies. But with the Ravens 11th pick of the draft, they take Tyler Beatty. Now, when I first saw his last name, I said, oh, oh, I said, oh, they look, hey, look, they go baddie. But no, 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 it's Tyler Beatty. Um... But anyway, he is a running back from Missouri. And just looking at his numbers, uh, over the first couple of years, 2018 through 2020, wasn't anything crazy. Uh, he first had an average yards per carry of 4.9, 4.2, and then 5.0 uh, in those respective years. And then the touchdowns weren't anything crazy either. He had two touchdowns, then three touchdowns, then four touchdowns. So he kept increasing by one. So, hey, he kept getting better. But then it was really last year where he took off. Last year was when... Everything just skyrocketed. So he had the most attempts that he's had in his collegiate career, but that being 268. Uh, the most yards rushing that he's had in his collegiate career, that being 1,604. The highest average yards per carry that he's had in his collegiate career, that being six yards per carry. The most touchdowns that he's had in his collegiate career, that being 14. The longest run that he's had in his collegiate career, that being 73 yards. The most receptions that he's had in his collegiate career, that being 54. Not the most yards, though. He actually had more yards receiving uh, in 2019 uh, off of 32 catches. He had 356 yards. But last year, he had 54 catches with 330 yards. Um, but anyway, so that's the numbers. But then when I watched him, when I actually watched him, he got a burst. He, he, he got a real quick burst. He's... It's weird because he's a patient runner, but he's a he makes quick decisions. If that even makes sense, like because he can he can wait for his blocks because I know they use them on a lot of screens and whatnot. So he'll wait for his blocks. He'll be patient with it, but then at the same time, if it's just a straight up running play, he'll go. He'll take off, and he catches the ball very effortlessly. It's not awkward or anything like that. Because um, again, he caught a lot of passes, especially last year. He caught with fifty four. Um, but he, the, the burst, the burst is my favorite thing. It's because he has such quick bursts and acceleration. He, he takes off. Um, now, pass protection, it was like, uh, that could definitely be improved. But he wasn't really used much as a pass protector uh, in school. So his role in the NFL, um, could he be a good special team? I'm not sure if he got any uh, playing, well, as the lead in Russia like that, I wouldn't think he would get much playing time on special teams, especially like kick return or whatnot. But I wonder if that's a role that he could possibly take. I know we got Devin DuVernay, and, and that permanent return is kind of up in the air, but um, I wonder if that's something that he could take part in, uh, in the return game. Um, but he, I wonder what this means for our guy Justice Hill. Because that's... Um, Something to think about. Uh, Justice Hill was a fourth round pick a couple of years back, uh, and now they draft the running back with the in the sixth round now. So something to think about, something to keep an eye on. Now at the same time, we remember um, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago when I just knew Raven they weren't about to keep no four running backs. No way, they did it though. They did it. And now with there being uh, going from 16 to 17 games, that extra game, that, that's a lot. That's a lot because that's one more games that your guys got to put their body through that wear and tear. Um, and keeping another running back, that would really be staying ready so you ain't got to get ready. And you know the Ravens, they love to run the ball. They love to, and they run it like nobody else. So it seems as if, like a lot of people pointed out, it seems as if the way that the Ravens drafted um, and the way that the Ravens have moved this offseason, um, it seems as if they are sort of trying to go back to 2019, trying to go back to that offense, trying to be a very physical 
uh, offense. Uh, a lot of tight ends. Like we saw, I mean, they, again, Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, they were there already. You can throw in Pat Ricard there if you want to. Then they go draft. Um, they go draft the two tight ends, one Isaiah Likely and the other one. Um, oh, Kala, Kala. There we go. Couldn't remember his name. So there's a lot of tight ends. That's a whole lot of tight ends. Then they building up the offensive line. Hopefully, Ronnie Stanley's healthy. They drafted uh, Daniel Falele. Somebody said I pronounced his last name wrong. I told him, all right, I'm going to just call him Daniel then. Um, they also drafted Tyler Lindenbaum. Uh, re-signed Makari during, last, during the season this past season. Um, signed Morgan Moses. Uh, so they've been doing some work there. Uh, kept Jawan James around, which I was surprised about. Um... What else? And then also the defense. They they did a lot on defense. They they drafted uh Kyle Hamilton with their first pick. Um, they drafted uh Travis Jones as well. Then they drafted the two corners. So you figured it was gonna be depth and special teams guys. Um, so the defense. I think the biggest hole right now on D. Oh, they drafted David Ajabo as well, but he. I I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna treat David Ajabo. Like, of course, hope he plays, but I'm going to treat it like Jawan James last year. Treat it like Jawan. If you can get something from him, great, but if I'm not going to expect it. And I know they said, oh, he can be back in October, but I'm, I'm not going to expect it. I think that was a, a future, future pick. Um, but, hey, again, you, you, you never know what could happen. Uh, so we'll see. But I think if, if I had to say that their, their biggest weaknesses on defense right now, or not even weak, but their biggest issues right now on defense – Inside linebacker, uh, and also maybe edge, um, Bowser coming back from Achilles, David Ajabo, Achilles, uh, Dalen Hayes, he come back from injury, and Penel McPhee going, Derek Wolf coming back from injury. So, yeah, I say, like, yeah, I say, I say edge, guys, edge, defensive ends. Um, that would be the bit, yeah, defensive ends, edge, guys, and uh, and inside linebacker. So, We'll see what happens there. If anything, you still got undrafted rookie free agents. You still got free agents. You still got possible trades. On. You, st you still got different things that you could do. That's on defense now. Now, offense, biggest weakness, why wide receiver. It's wide receiver. Because you lost. You only got worse at wide receiver. You didn't get better. Um, and, of course, I know you still got the guys that oh, they can prove themselves. They can. This can be their time to shine. But I just I don't envision a scenario where Ravens go into this season, 2022 season, where they're like, all right, Rashad Bateman, you are a guy, Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. I, I don't envision a scenario where the Ravens go into this season like that. I, I, I just don't see it happening. So, with, with that being said, um, let's see what happens. Let's see uh, what goes down. Um, let's see what transpires. Uh, but what I was saying before about 2019, it seems like they're trying to build that type of offense again, but sort of like y'all remember in Turtles, in, in Turtles 2, um, Secret City Ooze. Y'all remember in, in that with Shredder. First, Shredder was already big. He was already tall. He was already a problem for the Turtles. Um, and that's how the Ravens offense was in 2019. They were big. They were strong. They were a problem for the NFL. But then they end up getting stopped. But then Shredder, he got stopped by the Turtles. But then he got that ooze. And when he got the ooze, the ooze made him super Shredder. And it was like, oh, okay, this, this dude is something serious. Let's just hope that the Ravens season, it doesn't end the way that Super Shredders did for him in Turtles 2. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We out.